15 years in prison is the maximum sanction, and one can get it under the article on the spreading of fakes about the Russian army. The same term in the criminal code of the Russian Federation is provided for a double murder. But even such a severe measure of punishment has not prevented the citizens of Krasnodar from creating an anti-war committee. 5,000 people united to tear down the pro-war symbols in the forms of the letters Z and distribute anti-war leaflets. We know that many Russians are now in a decadent mood. It is sad to realize that our country has become an outcast and our hometown is hung with Z banners. And we want to show that only cowardly flanks of government stand behind the Z. And there are many people in the country who are against this, against the war. Anonymous member of the anti-war committee from an interview with Radio Liberty. In this anonymous interview with Radio Liberty, a member of the anti-war committee said that in many Russian cities there are coordinators of mass anti-war movements. They are called commissars. One local deputy from the Just Russia Party wrote a letter of denunciation on the committee. Members can only hope this doesn't end with an imprisonment. We often mention in our posts that our country has become a sort of a false Reich. The authorities of the Russian Federation simply copy-pasted Nazi Germany. The whole city is hung with Z posters. Did you ask the residents? Do they like it? Do they agree with this? Probably our government has created conditions under which there is no official second opinion. An anonymous member of the anti-war committee from an interview with Radio Liberty. The hunt for the opposition leader Alexei Navalny's team continues. He is soon with another case about the creation of an extremist community. On May the 13th, the house of a volunteer of his headquarters and human rights activist Alexei Tupitsyn was searched. Office equipment was taken out of an apartment in Irkutsk. Tupitsyn and his wife were taken away for the interrogation. A criminal case was also opened against the Russian artist Danila Tkachenka, who as early as May the 9th wanted to set off blue and yellow smoke bombs in Moscow. The police interfered. For this rally I found an apartment in a house near the state committee. I placed 100 smoke bombs in two large air conditioners, one for the yellow and one for the blue. From friends and relatives I learned that it is now apparently important for the authorities to find some kind of foreign funding, but this is my personal initiative, which I organized with my own money. I spent from 400 to 500,000 rubles. From an interview with Meduza, the new Atkachenko artist. Later they came to the artist's relatives with investigations. One of his friends, says Tkachenko in his interview for Meduza, was imprisoned for 10 days for allegedly swearing during his arrest. Petersburg resident Sergei Davidov was fined 30,000 rubles for writing No War and Putler Kaput in white paint on a trash can. After the writings were covered, he wrote again with green paint this time. In court, he admitted his guilt. He said he regretted that he wrote that on a trash can, but not on a poster. On the Sakhalin island, an old man, Vasily Tkachov, tore down a Z sign from the We Don't Leave Our Kind banner. A protocol was drawn up at the police station where he has worked for 20 years. I won't go anywhere. I said no. <laughs> Nadezhda from Yekaterinburg on May the 4th went to a solitary anti-war picket with her mouth soon shut. The woman explained her act by the fact that the Russian censorship sewed up her mouth. Local residents called several patrols for her at once. The police tried to forcibly send her to a psychiatric hospital, but the lawyers saved her. In the trauma department, the activist was only offered a tetanus shot. I removed the stitches myself. In the police report during the arrest, they wrote, I could not speak, I only mumbled. On the day of the rally, social services came to her with a check of her son's living conditions, but she managed to avoid the penalty. I came home, made this poster, and at 4 o'clock I realized that I needed to start to sew up my mouse. I disinfected everything and sewed up my mouse. I want people not to die so that there is no war. Denis Grekov, a lecturer at a Moscow university, was asked to resign because of his anti-war views. Grekov condemned the war on social networks, and a colleague from the university responded to the publication, saying that with such educators, enemies are not needed. The university was left without a teacher of critical thinking. Mr. Grekov did not delete the post. Radio Liberty also refused to remove posts about fakes, which is why the court fined the media for 12.8 million rubles. 
not so lucky were almost 2,000 Russians who, since the beginning of Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine under the article of discrediting the armed forces of the Russian Federation, have been brought administrative cases. In total, they were fined almost 20 million rubles. This is just what the human rights activists of the OVD Info managed to calculate on the websites of the courts and from the news of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. There are no protocols under such an article, only in Chechnya and the Magadan region. For repeated violations, they face criminal liability. Reported by Mirk Tefan, Yulia Bezborodko, UATV News.